This morning, addressing student mental health after a few tough years of learning throughout the pandemic. There's new guidance for schools pertaining to suicide prevention after data shows an uptick in attempts by students. Channel 3's Melissa Cooney joins us now after hearing from school officials on how they're tackling this difficult topic. Melissa. According to the 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey, 35% of high school students experience poor mental health. The Department of Mental Health says 7% of students attempted suicide in the past year. That's the number schools in the state alike want to reduce. After a few pandemic years, schools are looking to boost the well-being of their students. You know, the, the, the school community has been fractured by the pandemic experience. Caledonia Central Supervisory Union Superintendent Mark Tucker says some students fell behind academically, which is something they're working on. But more notably, he says students are having socialization issues. I know that teachers have told me they feel like they are seeing an increase in the classroom of students expressing that they need mental health support. Meanwhile, Linnea John and Scott Thompson of the Franklin West Supervisory Union say they're looking to make mental health care more accessible. Both supervisory unions are using a $200,000 grant from the state to initiate talk space to their community, virtual text and talk therapy for students and teachers. That's going to take some a while to work that out of the system. Um, so that, I think that's why, you know, finding ways to continue to provide supports for kids and staff that need it are going to be important. It removes the transportation barrier where, where we're located, um, you know, in our town, there's not many counseling centers and so folks have to travel, which is another burden on families. Both supervisory unions have dozens of students signed up for the program. These efforts are part of a wider initiative to bring awareness to mental health needs in schools, but the Department of Mental Health noting schools face overwhelming challenges among staffing shortages and insufficient funding. DMH's Chris Allen says while there isn't a high rate of suicide death among teens in Vermont, there is a high rate of suicide attempts or self-harming behavior. This protocol is really uh, really foundational to uh, what uh, what's needed in schools um, for a uh, coordinated, helpful response um, to students that are either expressing um, suicide, like thoughts of wanting to die or not be alive uh, and and really discusses like ways to get ahead of that as well. New protocol being brought forth to the legislature from the state include training staff on suicide prevention and awareness, how to respond to a student who's confiding in them with these thoughts, and how to reintegrate a student back into campus in a positive way after a suicide attempt. The, the major warning sign is whenever someone uh, shares that they have thoughts of wanting to die or not be alive, that is that is a critical moment that intervention is needed and more information is needed from that. And that that threat is to be taken seriously. Allen says every school has different resources, so they'd have to adapt as necessary for their operations. And back on the school level, the team in the Franklin West Supervisory Union says it's important for anyone interacting with students to be well trained for warning signs around suicide or self-harm. I hope there's increased access. I think schools can't be the only source of addressing mental health needs. So I would love to see more funding going to community mental health resources, um, but also to schools because this is where youth are. And for more resources on how to seek help if you or a loved one is experiencing thoughts of suicide, you can go to our website, WCIX.com, to see information on the suicide hotline, as well as other warning signs from the Department of Mental Health. Live in the studio, Melissa Cooney, Channel 3 This Morning.